Look, they're not all gonna be winners. Let's just be upfront about this, okay? All right, so I need to do the flip side of the coin because a few days ago, I did my most anticipated films of 2020. Well, I gotta do the flip side, which is the movies that I am pretty dang sure are gonna suck. Now, I, I try to not take cheap shots with this. There are some movies that are just, uh, some, there are plenty. There will be plenty of movies released this year that are just not for me. Not targeted at me, not meant to please me, meant for an audience that I don't get and they're very much not for me. I try hard not to put movies like that on this list because that's just taking cheap shots. I try and restrict it to things that even if it's maybe not something that it's totally in my wheelhouse, I suspect is also going to let down even the people who are the target audience for this thing. So, I've got seven of these, because I'm not going to pat it out to ten if I couldn't find ten that I was pretty certain about. And also let me point out, this is not me saying that I want these to be bad, or I want these to be, to, I want them to fail. I honestly don't really want any movie to fail, especially if I ever end up seeing these, it'd be really nice to be proven wrong, because that's happened sometimes, and it's wonderful. I don't expect it to happen with these, though. And these are not in any order of, like, one I'm least certain will be that will suck to the one I'm most certain that will suck. No, I'm doing these in order of release date across the year, so it, it's just chronological. So, kicking things off, Doolittle. So, first warning sign is being dumped in January. It has a troubled production history. It went badly over budget. It supposedly had some notable reshoots, which I suppose makes it a very true successor to the original Dr. Doolittle. No, not the one with Eddie Murphy, the one before that, which also ran over budget and had a lot of production problems. I don't know what it is, why they keep making these big budget movies with lots of animals, because same thing happened to friggin' Evan Almighty. Like, th there's a pattern at this point with these things, but the fact that it's being dumped in January, that is a big sign. I think that everybody involved can smell the bomb on this thing, and they just want to get it out quietly, be done with it, and move on as quickly as possible. The trailer didn't look awful, but it also didn't look great. And all the other warning signs just made me go, no, this is going to be bad. After that, I hate to kick a fandom while they're down, but look, I'm sorry, Sonic the Hedgehog. Because while redesigning and fixing the look of Sonic was no bad thing, it was a good call, that was far from the only thing wrong with that trailer. The feel, the story that it was setting up, that it was going to tell, the humor. This thing had major fundamental problems and reskinning the the pointy blue rat is not gonna fix structural character, bad humor, etc. problems. Those will exist regardless. So while it may look far less nightmarish, then that early trailer uh, made it appear. I don't think this is going to be good, folks. After that, we have Bloodshot. Which is a movie I actually kept forgetting was getting adapted. Until I saw the trailer. And the trailer wasn't bad. But it's not a good sign that the... I, and I went back and forth on this because the trailer gives away what feels like... There's no way it isn't a late game plot twist, like the sort of second act turn. But the thing is, I don't think there was anything to sell it on other than the twist. 
Because aside from the twist, aside from the gimmick, it looks just generic as hell. It looks so middle of the road for action movies, for superhero movies, for Vin Diesel. It just looks so bland. And I suppose they had to spoil the gimmick because that's, in theory, the only thing going for it. I mean, to be fair, that is also what it looked like in the trailers leading up to Edge of Tomorrow, but I'm not gonna say that that gives me any reason to hope for this thing. After that, <laughs> The Woman in the Window. You may or may not have heard of this one. This is an Amy Adams-led thriller sort of thing. Uh, Fox, I believe it was Fox, produced it. Disney got a hold of it and had massive reshoots done when it's when it tested horribly, specifically because of the third act. Third act, i.e. the ending. So, a couple of things. This thing got delayed by months. Significant reshoots, all to the ending. Now, even if they make the ending, quote-unquote, better, here's the thing about anything with a mystery element like thrillers tend to have. Even if you change the ending, the first two thirds were laying hints and groundwork and false leads and red herrings designed for the ending you're no longer using. So even if on paper, whatever new ending they put in there is better than what it was before, the first two thirds of the film aren't gonna build to the ending they have anymore. So it's still going to be a mess. Even the even the people who did the music have walked away from this. The, oh, man. This, this thing, this has a strong smell of just complete turkey about it. After that, what have we got? Oh, gosh. <sighs> <sighs> Talking about just swimming in a sea of mediocrity. The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Yeah, The Hitman's Bodyguard did well enough to warrant a sequel, and it's not like The Hitman's Bodyguard was an awful movie, but it was such a middle of the road, just filling the space, nobody's bringing their A-game kind of movie, and for that to get a sequel, a sequel that I have no doubt nobody involved is passionate about, and is only getting made because the first one made a decent profit, yeah... Not a lot of hope in that. That brings us to Monster Hunter, which you may or may not realize was getting a movie. This is a long-running video game franchise, and it's being adapted by Paul W.S. Anderson. And uh, from what I could see, it is being loosely Adapted by Paul W.S. Anderson. And the thing about uh, Paul loosely adapted Paul W.S. Anderson and video games, uh, that should ring a bell if you are at all familiar with the Resident Evil series of films. Here's the thing. Those kind of had their charm, in a way. They were nuts and not good. But they kind they kind of were the standard bearer of the certain kind of over-the-top, stupid kind of fun thing. But they were also very much a product of an earlier decade. It was weird that that franchise continued for as long as it did when it felt so early 2000s. And Paul W.S. Anderson, kind of as a director, is stuck in that era. So the idea that they handed him another video game franchise. Oh, boy. The... This is the this is the foundation that train wrecks get built out of, and uh, last one, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, A.K.A. The Conjuring Three. Now this is a very up and down franchise because it and it's fairly wide spanning at this point because there's The Conjuring and The Conjuring Two, duh, but there's also Annabelle, there's Annabelle the Creation, which was surprisingly good. There was Another Annabelle one that I forget the name of. There was a movie called La Llorona, which was connected to it. There was The Nun, which, you know, 
this thing's very up and down. But the core of it, the actual Conjuring movies, as opposed to the spin-offs, have always been very solid. So why do I have this on a list of movies that are gonna suck? Because the secret ingredient of those movies was director James Wan. The guy behind the original Saw. The guy behind Insidious. The guy behind Aquaman. He can take insanity and sell it. This is not being directed by him. This is being directed by the guy who directed La Llorona, which is part of the same universe and was not good. So, that this, this for me, I expect to be the nail in the coffin because I suspect not only will it not be good, they're, they're going to have to spend more money on it because they, they bring out the bigger budgets for this and it's not going to make its money back. Or if it does, not nearly in the amounts that uh, that they want. And maybe we can finally put the Conjuring universe to bed with this one. Because I'm pretty sure it's going to suck. So those are seven films in 2020 I feel confident in saying will be terrible. What are your thoughts about them? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about a bunch of stuff to do. Buttons, links, like, subscribe, share, Patreon support, maybe, it's a thought, there's a link in the description, plus there's links to other things like merch, books, social media, stuff that I'm on, check it out, but you also don't have to, because at the end of the day, you are the council, I just run the meetings, and until next time, this council is adjourned.